Today it's time to talk about hard rock and metal books, which is my favorite musical genre, basically anything in the rock spectrum. Uh, but uh, this book here, the first one, is The Complete Headbanging History of Heavy Metal. This is, uh, it got me into a lot of bands uh, that I never heard of, like Witchfinder General, which was a, a Sabbath clone, basically, in the early 80s. Really awesome stuff. Uh, so this book will definitely expand your musical horizons. If you're into metal, this will introduce you to a lot of stuff. And it's a really great history of the genre. Um, it might not be the one-stop book because I'm sure everybody has all different opinions of where do you draw the line, like what is uh, of the naming of the genres and stuff, like speed metal, thrash metal, power metal, fucking new metal, black metal, death metal, like everything that's out there. It's just like crazy. So great history of, of the whole genre. The way it begins, though, I have to say, it's so it's just fun to read anyway. Just listen to this first page here. I'm just going to read this first paragraph. It's almost like it's biblical in a way. It's just, it just starts off so epic. So, in the beginning, there was just a shadowy expanse of night sky and unknown. There, in disquieting oblivion, whirled the unanswered secrets of history animated by forces as ancient as civilization itself. Everything smoking, silvery, religious, and dark. These strong currents often lay forgotten and docile under the opportunities of war, crisis, and anguish called forth their awful powers. They had no sound or definition of their own until trapped and subjugated by the epiphany of Black Sabbath, the wise innocents, the originators of heavy metal. And that's how it all started. This is Eddie Trunk's Essential Hard Rock and Heavy Metal Guide. Definitely recommend this. Um, Basically, this is a 101 kind of book, uh, breaks down a bunch of the uh, essential bands that you should know about, uh, just 101, like in alphabetical order. So um, what I recommend is basically just give it a flip through and uh, stop it and read any of the bands that you're interested in. And then, you know, this is a, it's a good place to branch out and get into some more music. I really like the way it's laid out visually. The, the book's really well put together. It's a very easy read. You know, I, I read this whole thing on a plane one time. And, uh, yeah, definitely check it out. And actually, just recently, there's been a volume two, so he just did uh, a second one. So there's more bands yet in this one. And we have I Am Ozzy, the autobiography of Ozzy Osbourne. And this, believe it or not, is one of the best books I've ever read in my life. I mean, this guy's life story is fucking crazy. This guy, like, the things he has been through, he should have been dead a thousand times because of all the things he's done to himself. Very well written. You get the idea that when, when you read this, it feels like Ozzy's talking to you. You can really hear it in his voice. And uh, I'm sure, you know, whoever dictated it for him uh, put it together really well. So it, it's, it's coming straight from his mind onto the page, like no doubt. And what's really funny, uh, you know, you, you started off and uh, strange, he, he autographed this for me when he did a, a book signing for it, which is just amazing to be in his presence. Anyway, uh, it starts off, it says, they said I would never write this book. Well, fuck them, because here it is. All I have to do now is remember something. And then it's just a blank page. <laughs> Bollocks, I can't remember anything. So, uh, there's, there's too many stories to highlight in here. One, one that sticks out is when he, he goes on this rampage killing chickens. He just murdered all these chickens because he was just out of his mind. And the way it's written, it's like he's, he's covered in blood and feathers and all the things that were bothering him at the time are going on in his mind. So you could definitely see it like as a movie. Like they could have made, they could make a movie out of, out of this, this whole thing. Um, also... A lot of sadness in the book, lots of really sad stories, like the death of Randy Rhodes. And I've never heard that from his perspective. We all know that he died in a plane crash, but we don't all know the whole story of what happened. And a lot of it's unresolved. And uh, the way he tells it from his story, um, I mean, you'd have to you'd have to read it in here to hear it. Um, you know, the way the way he has it. But his perspective of that, there's a lot more to to that uh, than you'd think, and why it happened, and uh, you know, there's just a lot of things that a lot of mysteries with with his death, and uh, and he said that like after it happened, that in the plane wreck, like he found like there was just a piece of his shirt just laying there, just creepy, like disturbing stuff, uh, and uh, it's just just an amazing, amazing book. So I, I could, if I could recommend one thing, like I would say definitely check this out. 
And of course, if I mention Ozzy, I got to mention uh, Tony Iommi's book. So if you want to hear the, you know, the rest of the story about Black Sabbath from Tony Iommi's perspective, here you go. And of course, this one goes uh, obviously beyond uh, just the Ozzy age of Black Sabbath. So if you want to hear every, everything that happened past that, this is uh, the book to read. It's very um, fast. You can tell that there's a lot of stories that he has to tell, but he, he you know, keeps them short. So each chapter, it's just moving on. So it's like a, it's like a speed version of his life, which I guess most autobiographies are. You know, on the topic of Black Sabbath, I mean, there's also uh, Never Say Die. And this is a book that uh, it touches upon a lot of things that are in the Iomi book. So I would say read the Iomi book for his uh, you know, perspective and his side of the story. But this this one is a compilation uh, from interviews and all kinds of uh, testimonies over the years. So this is this is the history of Black Sabbath after Ozzy and uh, appropriately named Never Say Die because that was really the motto of the band that they they kept moving on. And there's so much shit happened to Black Sabbath, but they kept moving on, you know, over the years. I only kept it going. Then, um... There's the Black Sabbath FAQ. Uh, this book actually is, is not named very well. It shouldn't be called an FAQ. It's more like an RAQ, a rarely asked questions, because this is nitty gritty. This is like going really deep into Black Sabbath trivia, like all kinds of really trivial things that you don't really need to know. But if you're a big fan like I am, then this is this is awesome. This is the autobiography of Slash, and like it says on the top, it seems excessive, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Uh, very appropriate quote. Uh, th this book has lots of crazy stories in it, uh, and it's very, um, it's just very elaborate. It, it gets into everything in detail, so it seems like with this one, uh, he really took his time, I, I think, to really say everything he wanted to say, and... Um, I didn't know that so much went on behind the scenes. So this is, uh, it tells you everything, like why Guns N' Roses broke up, everything. If, if you ever had, you know, feelings that you wanted to see Guns N' Roses get back together or maybe some wishful thinking there, this book uh, shatters all that. Like you will never see Slash and Axel together ever again. I mean, after reading this book, it's, it's, it puts it all on the table very clear really crazy stuff that's happened to him, but that, that you can't help but laugh at. Like there was this one, story he has in here where he was he was on so much drugs basically he was in this hotel room and he thought there were demons chasing him and these little tiny demons were coming after him and then he's running through the the hotel naked and he's crashing through like windows i picture it like an action movie or something so he's running through and he's got broken glass and blood and he's he's naked and bleeding and screaming like the demons are coming after me <laughs> And just, wow, like, just crazy, crazy stuff. Oh, then, of course, there's uh, Dave Mustaine's autobiography. This one is a great testimony uh, to a lot of the history of Metallica and Megadeth. And um, you, you hear a lot from, you know, his side of the story. So this one really, again, puts it all on the table and uh, everything from his perspective of what went on. And uh, this must have been a very therapeutic book for him to read because... There's a lot of anger in it. There is a lot of really hard feelings, a lot of grudges. And uh, the moment in there that sticks out, which is so, uh, like, much, it's like a comic book almost, where when he's kicked out of Metallica, he has this story about how he's on a bus and he rides this bus um, out of town. And then he's, he's, he's like, he has no money and he's like starving and he's on the bus, like crawling under the seats looking for spare change or something, and then he finds this pamphlet um, that says the arsenal of Megadeth. It's about like Megadeth is like a, a, a certain number of deaths. It's like a big, you know, uh, death, but he, he reads that and it's just Megadeth stuck out to him and he's like, I will create my own band and I will, I will get back at them. And it just has this comic book feel, but um, lots of really honest uh, feelings in here. Speaking of Metallica, there's uh, a ton of Metallica books out there, so, um, you know, you could go on and on, but uh, a couple of these ones that I have, uh, this is The Ultimate Metallica, photographs by Ross Halfin, and uh, this is just really great for um, for pictures. I mean, they're a very photogenic band, and uh, the, the photographs in here are, are really amazing. Put on, put on some Metallica, put on your favorite album, and just uh, listen to it while flipping through this book, and uh, it's going to be... It's a great experience. I mean, look at that pyro. Look at that. 
Then there's Metallica and Philosophy. Uh, the name intrigued me, so that's why I got it. And uh, all the way through, it's really interesting. Um, it's just, it, it basically just breaks it down to different categories. It just talks about different um, ideas. It basically just like a bunch of essays. And um, like one of them is about Ride the Lightning. And uh, basically it's just all about different views on the death penalty. And I'm reading it, it's like, wow. I mean, it's actually like makes lots of interesting points. And, uh, and it's more of a philosophy book than a Metallica book. It kind of just takes uh, ideas that began with you know, Metallica songs or whatever, and then it kind of expands on it and gives it its own opinion. So it's not like opinions of the band or anything, but it's it's interpretations that, uh, um, you know, the authors come up with. So it's really interesting. Also, there's a couple books that I haven't read yet. I, I started reading as a uh, Pete Townsend's autobiography. Uh, I can't tell you too much about it because I haven't read it all the way yet. Uh, I just got real busy. I guess I decide to make a movie, so that's what happens. Uh, then uh, also, I, I've been looking at this one as uh, Brian Johnson from ACDC, his book. Uh, his, his book is a little more um, funny, like he, he makes it into like these little funny stories of things. But I've only read a little bit of it so far. I, I plan to, to finish these books when I get some time. In general, I really love uh, autobiographies. It's my favorite thing to read, especially rockers, because they just live such interesting lives.